So today I wanted to talk about queer representation in the MCU, specifically focusing on Jessica Jones, which seems to be the only Marvel property that has actually any interest in showing queer characters. And Luke Cage season two. I see you. So, um, I think they should have made Malcolm bisexual. Just saying. For the MCU, when it comes to queer representation, it basically blows. Having bad queer representation, having bad queer characters, that doesn't mean that your movie is instantly bad or your show sucks. The MCU has amazing content, just not great queer content. Oh, you think it won't fit the whole can. You think. And that's where you'd be wrong. <laughs> so, what does queer content have to do with Malcolm Ducasse from Jessica Jones? I said his name so weird. So what does this queer content have to do with Malcolm Ducasse from Jessica Jones? Basically, I think Marvel Netflix um, really missed an opportunity with Malcolm. I think he's in a very unique position where he could have been a queer character. Marvel Netflix tends to advertise itself as the more adult side of the MCU. What that seems to mean to Marvel Netflix is that the main character can have moral ambiguity, we can show blood, and we get to see the superheroes f because that's what being an adult is. However, I think there are moments in Jessica Jones season 2 that can just like be tweaked and uh, he's totally bi. You guys, like I don't I don't know if you watch the same show I do, but he is a bisexual baby boy. That is all I'm saying. I don't think it helps that he's played by Ika Darville. I think that's probably where I'm getting a lot of the queer reading into this, but <laughs> he's just, he does so well. You know, it would be nice to have a queer character that isn't a villain. To be fair, I personally think that as far as queer representation goes in Jessica Jones season one, they basically knocked it out of the park. I didn't have any complaints at the time. We didn't just get one queer character, we got three. Three main characters. They've got names, they've got motivations, they've got differing levels of like good and evil in them and like, like those are the types of characters we want. If you're gonna kill them off, you might as well make more. Just saying, just saying. And then uh, season two happened. I wish this was alcohol. Obviously there are parts in season two that I did like, but like I just, as a whole, yikes. Anything that I'm about to say, I don't think would have like fixed season two in any particular way that would have made me like enjoy it anymore. It, it would have left like a small little smile on my face. Like, I mean, season two sucked, but like, Malcolm's bisexual. It's really cute. Like, I enjoyed that. So I propose three changes to Jessica Jones season two. Very small, very minor changes that I think would have been easy to do, cost effective, and would have like really expanded the queer representation in the show. Change one. Earlier in the season, Malcolm is sent to see the old landlord of the apartment to see if he can like appeal to him. And what he doesn't realize is that Jessica sent him there for a particular reason. He opens the door, the landlord starts looking at him and he has this really weird, unreadable look on his face. And I don't know what Ika was told to think here, but it just looks like Honestly, this is what was going through my mind when I first saw this scene. I, it looks like, oh, oh, this man's gay. Oh, oh, does he like me? Oh man, it's 2019. We can't be disgusted by gay people anymore. I hate it. <laughs> but I don't think this moment is unsalvageable. I guess it's like, oh, Jessica sent me here because this guy's attracted to men and he's trying. she's trying to use my good looks. I don't know. It just, it feels like Spice World levels of reverse sexism. Like, feminism means that men are the eye candy. Okay? I think with boys, 
You should be able to just wheel them in. Yeah, and order them like a pizza. Yeah, mm -hmm. no cheese. Ah! Uh, that's like a 90s feminist idea. He's beautiful. So I get why. What if this reaction that Malcolm has on his face is not him being confused or realizing, oh, this man's attracted to me, I don't know how to act, but it's more like, oh, what, what are these feelings inside me? What if Malcolm is attracted to him? You don't even have to be clear about what's going on in that moment. You could just be like, you know, oh, like Malcolm's having a reaction to that man what is going on? And you could even have the audience think, oh, does, is, does he have a problem with him being gay? Oh, like, is Malcolm, like, homophobic? Huh. You can do that and then, like, later on reveal that, like, uh, he's kind of the opposite. Like, he's not scared of gays. He's one of them. <laughs> yeah, you, you could just have, like, this weird reaction on purpose not this unreadable bullshit and then you get to the next scene and he's like oh you're just treating me like i candy for the landlord blah, 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 blah. so the audience thinks oh oh he just didn't like being treated that way or like you know objectified or something and then like we get to a later on scene and it's like oh he was having his bisexual awakening that's what was going on you can do that like this could be the start of him discovering that he is attracted to men as well as women and the audience can join him on his journey because like he's confused and we're confused we're just confused about what he's confused about <laughs> change number two this would be in the context of malcolm already knowing he's bi so this would be discarding the previous scene there's this scene where Jessica is trying to find Malcolm and she just finds his phone. And so she scrolls through uh, his dating app feed because that's who she's seen him have the most interactions with. So she's like scrolling and we see a picture of a bunch of girls. And then we hear her calling a bunch of girls and there's even, <laughs> and there's even one crying. And like that, that scene cracked me up, that was pretty funny. So when Jessica is scrolling through, all you would need is like one or two, but if you must do one picture of a man in there, that would be the subtlest way you could show that he's bisexual. You would just, there's a picture of a man, get a stock photo of a man. Like, oh my God, Marvel, you have money. And just that small little Photoshop scene that I could probably do myself, I have just made a bisexual Malcolm. You're welcome, internet. You could even have her go, instead of, Mary, have you seen Malcolm? You could have her go, Dustin, have you seen Malcolm? You just change the name. You changed it to a very masculine, typically masculine sounding name. You did it. He's bi. You can't argue with it. You just made him queer in less than three seconds and you wouldn't have had to commit to anything. And now, my third and most important point, the bar scene, the chocolate bar scene. Now this scene is interesting. Watch this scene without sound. What does this look like? This is a visual medium. What story are we telling with just the visuals? This looks like a coming out scene. So. What if we added on a queer layer to this onion of a man? Now, in the context of the show, he is a drug addict who is surrounded by substances and he's fighting through it so he can help someone and be a hero because he is the moral center of the show because he is our baby Malcolm and I love him. He's in a gay bar. He's freaking framed by rainbow lights. Are you freaking kidding me right now? He looks beautiful, by the way. <laughs> The lawyer is like, you don't know what it's like to not be accepted by your family. And Malcolm could be like, but I do. Or he could be like, no, I haven't exactly gotten to that part yet. No, I don't. I was lucky when I came out, my parents accepted me. There's the scene later where he gets beat up in the middle of the street because the guys assume that he's gay and like, like, I don't think it's a bad written scene, but it is. This could be a thing that could lead into, oh, he's never going to come out because he just got beat up just for being in a gay bar. Like, 
like that could be an interesting storyline and what what oh wait they just needed him to get beat up so trish could save him okay i just i don't uh, what this doesn't make sense because if malcolm is just straight and like you have him get him beat up because he doesn't deny that he's not gay like the guys assumed is he learning a lesson are we learning a lesson who's learning anything if you made him queer this would be such a well-written scene part of me thinks that someone was actually trying to make malcolm by and then someone came in and said nah and that's even worse to think about you it's it's right here. it's literally literally right here in your palms and you were just like nah okay okay i know these shows don't like to do like the on the nose thing they like to be subtle and i don't think they really know how to do that it's mostly like just kind of talking around the topic or like just not talking about the topic at all and they think they're being subtle but it's actually just bad writing these guys live in new york city why are there only two shows in the Defenders universe where there are canonically gay characters out of five shows? Six? Five? Does Defenders count as a separate thing? Where are all the queer characters? They live in New York City. If anything, the straights should be outnumbered. <laughs> you only had one demonstrably good character, and that was Wendy, and you had her killed off by another queer character. Are you fucking kidding me? Even though the showrunners don't really say it in so many words, Jessica Jones is a show that has feminist leanings and LGBT issues are part of a lot of people's feminisms. I know there's this annoyance that like when we finally get queer characters, that those characters don't end up being good enough or that they get ripped apart by critics because like it's not the most perfect queer representation and that's something i had to check myself on because like originally i ripped apart hogarth's storyline and i was like well if it's this trope and this trope and this trope and i just remember reading something about tropes aren't necessarily bad a lot of queer tropes are kind of bad because it tends to be the only stories that queer characters get and that's basically what I was getting at. And I think you can still use these tropes. Like I said, you, I don't think you really have to change Jerry's storyline. I think if you just added more queer characters into this universe and made them like good guys, that would help. I think that would like, you know, even out the playing field. Sometimes I wonder like, were they concerned that Jessica Jones was going to become the gay show instead of like the woman show of the Defenders. I mean, if you're that concerned about it, just put in gay characters in all the shows. I know Daredevil, ADR wife does not count. Oh my God, so lazy. But I will say, cost effective. When we are concerned about queer representation shows, we don't just mean put queer characters in the shows. That's minimum effort, first of all. Mainstream media already loves putting queer characters in stuff. They love them when they're evil or when they get killed off or when they get killed off by other queer characters. This kind of representation, it isn't groundbreaking. You're not challenging anyone's ideas about queer people if you just put them in your show and make them all bad guys or kill them off. If you make a character like Malcolm the moral heart of the show and you make him queer and you show what it's like to figure out that you are queer at an older age or how it is to be queer and a person of color or queer in an attic. When you play into these tropes, all it does is keep queer people on the fringes. You can't say you support queer people Put them in your show, but not do anything with them to show that, like, you're not just doing anything besides paying lip service. I acknowledge that you're a queer person and that you exist. That's not what queer representation should be. Queer representation should be challenging to a straight audience. You want your gay people, you want your gay audience, and you want your straight audience, and you don't want to challenge that straight audience. 
But like, you're Jessica fucking Jones. You're an adult show. It should be challenging. When you play into these tropes, you're saying gay people can be in our stories, but they have to meet some sort of consequence. I'm tired of queer people just being punished. Can we also see them being loved? Bye.